Alrighty. Hi, how you doing? I'm digging. This is the vibe. And as always, there's a great deal to think about. And there is an even um, greater big deal, my bad, um, as to where to start and, and, and how much information you want to give out all at once. Uh, so funny how my thoughts, even though they pertain to this moment and the future, they ended up looking in the past, way in the past to the very beginning, um, um, literally. So we're talking about the atom, Adam and Eve, to do because it originated there. So might as well go there. I'm going to keep hammering away at this. Um, I know there's three different bloodlines. It wasn't anticipated. There was supposed to be one. Then there was two. Then there was three. And on that moment, and now they're going to say four and so on and so forth because everybody wanted a piece of the pie. They wanted uh, um, to create uh, a reflective image out of their own DNA, their own gene, and I guess it would feed an ego. I don't see, um, I don't see that being a, a, an option really, even though it started out that way, uh, for some, I guess it mattered, they were there to prove a point. So I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to make a really quick video here, and this is going to be about Cain and Abel. And um, as we go along, I hope that you'll be able to connect these videos and understand why I made certain videos and why they were significant. And the significance to this one here is how important it is. Like, we need to really bring it home here when uh, uh, the Lord said to the accuser that we know is Satan um, and said you know he's gonna bruise your head you might bruise his heel but he's gonna bruise your head and as time goes on they referred it all to uh, the planet Jupiter and sure, okay, take reference because Murphy's Law, that's exactly what happened. And they were comets, just tons of them, just all of a sudden they decided they were going to hit up on Jupiter. And so, you know, they took the scripture and applied that to science and went, oh, this is what it meant in the beginning. Yes, but we need to understand that the reason the asteroids happen is because we influence the planets. We do, according to our actions. And this is where we build up karma and whether we choose to live in dharma and not worry about karma. And dharma is being on the proper path that you yourself chose to incarnate. Because now is the time where you got to experience your gift. Remember, you chose. You have to remember that. You chose. <clears throat> I made a video. Um, and I'm going to have you guys uh, seek it. Uh, the reason being is because it really does, or I explain, um, your birth and what your purpose is, why you're alive, and and uh, in the bigger picture of things, uh, where do you come into play? How are you part of this bigger picture? I'm really surprised that um, a lot of people haven't seen it, and you know, there's a lot of questions out there, and I think to myself, somebody only has to see these videos 
and uh, they're going to understand it. So if you're one of the lucky ones, um, I'll take you here and we will release you. And at the moment of release, you're going to be in your element of heart, body, spirit, and soul. Because this is what it's really all about, is eternal salvation, whether you want to call it that or not. And boy, oh boy, I'm going to tell you something. They call it the Cristo story. They call it this and that. Whatever you want to call it, I'm telling you, Christ is for real. There's no way around us, like none, none. You know, there's some people that really want you to prove to them, and I I just couldn't do that. I just couldn't, you know, because at that point, I have the understanding that that person needs to experience what they need to experience in order for them to make that decision for themselves. Do they believe that, that somebody could care so much about you that would up themselves. They would take that chance of getting slaughtered just so you'd have a chance to live. I keep reiterating it through the radios. And um, uh, don't matter how you look at it, you know, outside of your own kin, um, uh, nobody else is going to do it for you. And so, you know, we really have to keep considerate, keep that in the forethought of our minds. So this way here we can pull everything together. Because if I was to say to you, hey listen, what we call aliens or other species on other planets and in other galaxies, like they know him too. It's not just us, it's us that if by chance we don't wake up and smell the coffee, I mean seriously smell the coffee, we're done for. And there's nothing nobody can do. Why? Because we have free will. And so we need to vibrate this particular energy. And in order to do that, we have to understand. And in order to do that, we have to begin <laughs> at the beginning. Hence, this brings me to Cain and Abel. Okay. So, and, you know, um, I would be the wiser. Don't, don't hang up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. With this whole, um, um, Abel had a preferred sacrifice. Um, in comparison uh, to Cain, that sounds like a nice hog. Um, um, uh, and and you have to keep in mind there again, even though she was impregnated with both seeds. Uh, that's right, with both seeds. Okay, because that was the apple, and. Um, I know I mentioned this once, I believe, or maybe I haven't. I think just just in passing, where I said he was relentless. I mean, she was sleeping and he was calling her name. It, it was like there was no getting away. He was relentless until Eve broke. He so wanted to prove that she would not die. What people don't know is that Adam just about died. So maybe I'll make this video after this here. Yeah. Okay. When Cain was born, it was obvious that Abel was Adam's seed and Cain was his father's seed. Now, where it came to Eve and Adam in particular, he did not begrudge Eve because in his thinking, uh, he allowed himself to be influenced. He allowed himself to get caught in that moment. So the fact that Cain was born, he too was accountable for Cain. And because of this, he st stepped up as he did with Abel and declared him okay 
you know, um, I'm going to love you like I let, like I love Abel and make a point of, of not showing, um, specialty or, or, or bias, uh, toward Abel because Abel was his blood and Cain wasn't and all was good, you know, in the sense Cain really felt unloved and unwanted. Now, it wasn't because of Adam. He, Adam didn't make him feel unloved or unwanted. His mother certainly didn't make him feel unloved and unwanted, and neither did his brother Abel. It was his father. His father did come to see him, came to see him twice, and Cain came to the understanding and the conclusion that this war that he created, and he insisted on the battle till the very end, was more important to his dad than Cain was in himself a part of his dad. And so, as a kid, he felt unloved and unwanted because his father pursued a war against God versus um, the blessing of a son um, and, and, and giving to him what every father is a son. Now, like I said, Adam was very fair. If anything, actually, Adam was harder on Abel because he wanted Abel to understand as, as Cain grew, he was slower. He was slower to learn. He was slow, slower to respond. Um, um, it, even though he understood a concept, uh, he constantly needed the, the, the reaffirmation in the form of direction and giving him praise and encouragement along the way. Where Abel, Abel just quickly learned. He quickly picked things up, he quickly learned, he quickly grew, and there was a vast difference between boys, a huge difference between boys. And Adam's heart went out to Cain again and again, going, you know, he knew his dad wasn't coming around, and, you know, he said to him, look, I'm your dad, you know, too. I mean, I'm here. Granted, you know, this happened this way, but I'm here to love you. I do love you. I, I feed you and I clothe you and I teach you and I, I, I hug you. Be open to the fact that I love you. You are as much mine as Abel is. You both are, are from the same mother. And that, I swear that was the only thing that kept him going until the day that he snapped. And that was when he had heard from our Heavenly Father and he said, why would you give me empty seeds when Abel has picked out the best of his flock to honor me? And that was a reflection on how he felt, that he felt that he had to hang on, even steal, you know, to the very best because there wasn't going to be anybody there that's going to give him that outside of Adam or love him that way outside of Adam. Now, when I say Adam, I'm also including his mother, their mother, Eve, how we, we know her as Eve. Okay, now, the nice thing, okay, is that as they were growing, they were very playful. Um, they joked around a lot. They really got along. 
a lot. Abel did show him a lot of uh, love and affection. He was his brother. And where Cain was down on himself because he obviously saw he was <laughs> becoming a giant, <laughs> you know, and, and he was slower. He said to Abel, don't I embarrass you? Like if we went out into the world and went to a real school, you know, you would have an opportunity to make friends. And, well, wouldn't you be, you know, ashamed to say that I'm your brother? And Abel said, what? 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 What are you talking about? <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, that, you know. And now, they left the Eden at that time. Okay, the specific garden where whatever went down there, okay, Adam worked until the ground just could not produce food any longer. The ground had been so worked, their only choice was to leave the Eden and because there was no more fruitfulness. That, you know, they made that choice. Uh, so they were leery in going out into the world because they knew that there was other uh, living beings on the earth, but these living, living beings were not made from their God, from their creator. They were somehow um, made by others. Eve was scared of the lawlessness because their shenanigans could be heard you know throughout the heavens their echo the echo was so loud but there was no way um, uh, um, to feed the kids and to keep themselves going so they ended up uh, uh, packing up as much as they possibly can they had a donkey and um, uh, they made their way outside of uh, the Eden because as God said he he left them he he left the Eden and said okay now you're gonna work for it for what you've done and and that was you know a lack of faith and why would you choose the possibility of dying like seriously and Eve did save Adam so you know that that was a whole cursed action that you know, looking at the bigger picture, they both understood when they say that uh, they realized that they were no longer, no longer naked. That's where I'm saying they understood. They understood their actions and, and they assumed the responsibility and it was a hard life. It wasn't a, an easy life, it was a hard life. Um, but they, they had children and they loved their children and rather than carrying a cross they really tried to teach their children um, um, that you have to be earnest and have a relationship with with God with your Creator or um, you're gonna be doing exactly what he's doing and that is working really physically hard I mean, to the point where, you know, in today's society, OMG, yeah. You know, people get a scrape and it's like, I'm dying, I'm dying, I need stitches. <laughs> okay, so they, they moved out of there. And um, as I was saying, you know, when God asked them, hey, wh wh what's up? And what it was really all about was the fact that, you know, Cain was taught about God. Um, Abel was taught about God. They were completely aware of God. You know, God let them, you know, know him. And it made it more the question when he said to Cain, what's up? Don't you trust me to give me your best? And in return, what am I going to give to you for you giving me your best? Now, you have to remember his dad was the ad adversary. His dad was Satan. And so what did he learn? Why would God expect it? Because Adam did the right thing. And that was love him, nurture him, 
guide him be his father because he felt accountable so therefore Adam said you too are my son so much so when when God proposed that question to him uh, he killed his brother out of a jealous rage just couldn't couldn't take it anymore you know bad case of feeling I'm so feeling sorry for myself and the reason I'm saying that is because uh, one gets it but you can't you know you can't make that horse drink even though you bring it to water and um, I do believe it is because the way that they had shown me the because of the seat um, he was a lot slower um, um, he 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 was uh, a giant um, he was abandoned by his father and uh, the difference was just such a huge difference I mean when after he lost it and uh, he killed his brother uh, Abel um, at some point in time he wanted to die but God wouldn't let him so did Cain ultimately love Abel yeah he did yeah he did uh, um, that's probably why God said you're gonna walk the earth until the end of days and I'm never giving you the opportunity to die. You're going to live and continue living because death is too good for you. And that ultimately sucks because he's got how many lifetimes to have gotten it. Now, I did see ultimately, you know, he did love Abel, but he did shed his blood. And it was directed at the wrong person. It should have never been Abel or his parents, Adam and his mother. It should have never been God. His, his feelings of abandonment and, and feeling of inadequ inadequacy um, came from his father. And his father, you know, basically, I mean, I, I'm glad he didn't say, oh, wah, you know, they, you know, because, uh, I, I mean, when it came to his offspring, because he was from his groin, and um, at first he was reluctant, um, uh, uh, but then, uh, the second time, uh, he wanted to see a part of himself like he created this 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 being but um, just didn't have the time for him and unfortunately you, you know the sons um, um, they're the ones that pay for um, their parents mistakes you know it says for their parents sin it's their kids that end up paying for it and when you stop and you take a look at it from the very beginning yeah, I mean, so much so that um, uh, didn't that take us down this dark, 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 dark path? Okay, so um, that's the very beginning. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, this is fact. If you need the truth, um, ask the universe. Uh, if you want to be specific, ask God. Ask my Savior, because his name is Jesus, and or... Um, if you want, you can ask me. Leave that in a comment. Um, okay, if you don't like it, don't say anything mean. Just walk on by. Just, just, just pass on by. And um, um, don't forget to subscribe if you think I might have something interesting to say. Uh, if you like it, a thumbs up would be nice. And um, share. Oh, bye-bye. I told you. Oh, no, I guess this next video is going to be about that moon. But I'm ending this one and beginning with the next one with I told you about July 27th. 
nothing happened because it's misinformation. What did happen and what we're being, you know, told about this happened um, in our heavens long time ago, but not what people were thinking or suggesting. Suggesting. Ding, 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 ding. So if you want to know the truth, you'd catch one of my videos. And if you wanted to completely go all the way, well, then we're going to uh, broaden your horizons. And um, let's hope that we get you lifted and you connected because um, the sooner that we all connect in one energy and uh, the sooner we start vibrating the way that we should, we're going to get rid of a lot of negativity. A lot of plans are going to unravel. Now, we've got this one chance. we got to do it, do it right. I believe that was Joan Armour trading. Okay. I bid you adieu. I love you, Amore. I'm going to say, um, ciao, ciao. Ciao. Ci vediamo, ciao. Ciao. No. T'ho detto ciao. <laughs> Non mi vuoi capire? Okay, I'll say it in English. Okay, that might make a difference. I'll say bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, amore. Ciao.